Connecting the Seven Triads of C Major, Part 2. We learned to connect primary triads that shared a tone, tonic and subdominant or tonic and dominant, by retaining the common tone in both triads in the same voice. Listen to it. This principle of using a single tone as a pivot between two chords can be extended and applied to the four remaining scale triads as well. Pairs of triads sharing just one tone are always situated a fourth or a fifth apart. Though ties are not essential, we've added a few ties here to visually draw your attention to the common tones. Listen. By the way, be sure to play through these examples on your piano keyboard. Thus, when progressing from one chord to the next, we apply the same old rules to the four voices, retaining the common tone, moving the other voices to the nearest tones of the second chord, and so forth. Chords a fourth or a fifth apart, however, present a new problem. The main problem is octaves involving one or both of the outer voices, soprano and bass progressing in similar motion from different intervals to an octave or double octave may produce not parallel octaves, but what we call hidden or concealed octaves. Why might this be a problem? Hidden octaves result because the musical ear tends to fill in the missing tones of the leap, implying a parallel perfect octave, which of course is against the rules. We illustrate the effect of a hidden octave here with the smaller notes in the example on the right. So how do we deal with hidden octaves? Let's just say that when the voices involved move downwardly from different intervals into an octave, as shown here, the hidden octave is not as noticeable, thus it does not sound bad at all. Hidden octaves are also acceptable when both outer voices, bass and soprano, move upwardly, provided that one of the outer voices progresses by a semitone into the octave, either diatonic or chromatic. The other outer voice may skip or leap into that octave. Hidden octaves are also good between bass and an inner voice, either tenor or alto, where the bass leaps and that inner voice moves by a diatonic step, either semi or whole tone, into the octave of the bass. But this hidden octave sounds bad. Why? Because here we have two outer voices, bass and soprano, leaping and skipping upward together into an octave. There is zero stepwise motion, so this is not good voice leading. Having both bass and soprano skipping and leaping in the same direction like that sounds bad, amateurish, because of the filling in effect of the ear mentioned earlier. We stress that such movement only sounds bad in the upward direction, and then only when both outer voices are leaping or skipping over notes of the scale. From experience, hidden octaves even sound awkward when one of the outer voices, either bass or soprano, leaps upward and the other outer voice progresses into the octave by a whole tone in the same direction. which is precisely what happens in this 2-5 progression. The soprano is moving upwardly in similar motion to the bass by a whole tone from the third to the octave of the bass, and it just doesn't sound good. We know that one way of solving the problem of parallel octaves between bass and an upper voice is to use contrary motion, so it stands to reason that contrary motion would also resolve the dilemma of hidden octaves between bass and any upper voice, even the soprano. As stated previously, there is no artistic issue when both bass and soprano move downwardly into an octave.
If all of this seems confusing to you, or trivial, don't worry, because future lectures supply more details on hidden octaves and on hidden fifths as well. In summary, proper movement between chords a fourth or fifth apart can be assured by remembering these simple principles pertaining to hidden octaves. The outer voices, bass and soprano, must be carefully watched. Skips or leaps in the same direction by both an outer voice and any other voice into an octave, whether up or down, are forbidden, except to inversions of the same chord. Similar motion into an octave between an outer voice and any other voice, inner or outer, is permitted in a descending direction if one of the two voices moves by step. The other voice may either skip or leap into the octave. Similar motion into an octave between both outer voices is permitted in an ascending direction, but only if one of them ascends by a semitone, not by a whole tone, into that octave. Previous rules regarding voice range and crossing, common and nearest chord tones, contrary oblique and similar motion, parallel perfect fifths, unisons and octaves, skips and leaps to dissimilar chords, and the leading tone all continue to apply. And that's it. Subscribe, like, and share the link to this channel, and post a comment if you would like clarification or to suggest a future topic. Now, food for thought. Here are two progressions in the key of C major that go against one of the principles pertaining to outer voices ascending to a hidden octave. The 2-5 progression sounds a bit awkward. But the 3-6 progression does not sound as bad. What is the reason for the difference? Think about it. Thank you for watching.